Welcome. My name is Mark Anthony Dubo Jr. I was born July 4th, 1986. I want to say thank you for tuning in to try to figure out some more about your dog. One thing that I've come to realize is, you know, we're all looking for different things from our dogs. There's some stuff that I've realized that I've been able to, like, get with my dogs that pretty much everybody wants. And, and that's, for me, I've never been confused of, like, how do I get this? How do I get my dog to calm down? How do I get my dog to relax? And I've just come to realize the stuff that, like, I want to do with my dogs gives me that part of the life that everybody else is kind of looking for. And it comes down to the simple thing of I just have to talk a little bit again about some things that I kind of keep talking about. And that's going to come down to what your goals are for your dog. And at the same time, making sure you just give that dog some exercise. Because more than likely, the goals that you're looking for from your dog are going to give you the, I mean, the exercise you do for your dog is going to give you the goals that you're actually looking for. And we can't, we can't mix around here with what, what, what we're expecting. We can't expect the dog to like look good and then we're going to do something later on. The dog, we got to do something and then the dog's going to look good. And I just want to say that out loud so that I can just say that I've said it before. But basically, the main thing that I've noticed is, you know, I'm not really, I've, I've never been a person to, in reality, have dogs inside of the house. My dogs primarily just live outside. I've just been changing it up just to see because in reality, like this Johnny man here, he stays in here for some time, but he really just likes laying outside comes in here and there but I, I give him a choice you want to stay inside you want to go outside and if he comes to the door he comes in if he doesn't then he stays outside and uh, my border collie i mean he's always been outside he's an outside dog that's just who he is what he represents what he's all about and he she's like i don't want to say scared of the house but he doesn't like the the closed in areas same with my shepherd you don't like the like they just like to lay outside but this dog she didn't really like <laughs> she didn't really like sit outside too much she's more of an inside type dog i've had many dogs that are just inside type dogs but she just is that. And day one when I got this dog, she was like, like, I don't know how I can doing what I'm doing right now, basically, from what I started with. And what I started with is more than likely what's going on inside of your house. The dog is wild. The dog is just jumping on everything. The dog is just going to food. Dog is pacing. It's everywhere. It's in the windows. It's in the blinds. It's in the door. It's barking out the window. It's doing everything. It's doing the most. And someone can say to me, well, Mark, you don't live on a neighborhood. You don't have people walking by. But I got chickens. I got cows. I got a donkey. I got everything out these windows for these dogs to be able to see. And I don't know what's going to be worse, having a human being walking by or just having a, I got a whole flock of chickens right there. They could just stare out the window. But they don't do that. You know why? Because they get the exercise. And my goals are to get my dogs. <laughs> that's my goal. I want to exercise my dogs. That's, that's what I look forward to in my day. I look forward to waking up and knowing I'm about to take this dog on a run, a walk. We're about to have an adventure. We're going to do something. That's, that's my goal. My goal is to do that. My goal is to make that happen. And then I realized when I was able to complete that goal, I'm able to find what everyone else's goals that I talk to want, a calm dog inside of your house. And I used to do all kinds of different things to try to get the dogs to calm down in the house. And my go-to method was stick it in the crate. Not only just that, but stick it in the crate and only let it out to go potty and the dog in two years is going to be a nice dog. I just haven't found <laughs> Many people have told me this is how it works. I just haven't found the success with that. I noticed that the dogs just keep getting worse and worse and worse. Worse to the point that I wish that I could go back in time sometimes, but, you know, we got to learn what we learn. But I wish that I could retract anybody that I ever gave that information to, saying that your dog is going to finally calm down by just letting it sit in the crate all day, that your dog is going to relax. Your dog is going to know how to be like that good dog inside of your home. And that's just not, not the case. More than likely, the reason that that dog is going absolutely wild inside of that house is because the dog isn't basically doing anything. It's always in the home. It's not out doing anything. It's just in the house. It goes out for a potty for 5, 10, 15 minutes, then it comes back in. I mean, even at the end of the day, I'm going to say this, even if you're taking a dog for a potty for an hour, if it's not doing the exercise that the dog is needing, but it's just doing the exercise that you're needing, the dog is still going to go wild. It's still going to be crazy. So I've just noticed that, that month after month, after having this dog, that in the house, I mean, I don't, because at day one, I had her on leash. I had her on leash. I'd have her close to me. But she was just, <laughs> she's a hot mess. And that's why I'm more likely today that she just knows to just hang around because I did have her on leash. I gave her no attention, gave her no affection, gave her no praise, gave her no toys, gave her no treats. She was just sitting in me. I'm sitting here. She's sitting here. So most of that, in reality, at the end of the day, is going to be extremely boring for her, right? Because I'm just like looking at the phone, doing something, typing up something, texting somebody, sending an email. And to her, it's just like, you know, we're just, we're just hanging out. And, and I got her to like, say, be 
understanding what I'm looking for. But it really got in tune when I was just doing the consistent exercise every single day. That she just really got to that point of just, she knows what I guess I can say what the rules are. The rules in the house, we're not jumping on anything. We're not chewing on anything. We're not chasing anything. We're not running after nothing. We're not doing nothing in the house, but just hanging out. We hang out in the home. Outside, I don't, not that I don't have rules. They have rules. You can't do so much too far. But I don't have no, like, said strict rules. Where that's a, the difference that I'm going to say is with what the dogs are today is what they were, you know, on two, three, four hundred years ago. Dogs today primarily live inside of the homes. And we're expecting to put the dog in the home and just stick it in there and just think that it's going to be, be good to go. We got we to show it what we're looking for. Not in a way of, still, I really don't tell her not what not to do. I just tell her what I'm looking for. And that was why I would just have her on leash. But in reality, we were button heads because she has so much energy. She has so much that it, like, literally, I would just get frustrated. I was like, ah, I just quit, put her in the crate. Put her in the crate, she's just, <laughs> I don't know what it is about this dog. But even when she would frustrate me, it was just, she just made me laugh because just her, her excessive amount of just, I don't know, but this dog is just strange that I just, she's just like happy all the time. Like, I just don't see a, I'm sad, I'm nervous, I'm worried. She's just, she's a happy-go-lucky dog. She's just soup, just like full of, let's go have a party, man. Let's go do something. And it just, it got in me to just, I see her in that crate, whipping that tail, beating the sides of it, making all kinds of noise. Every time I'd get up, she's just going crazy. I couldn't move. If I like, act think. If I would think right now about getting up, she would just go crazy in a crate back there. Just like an explosion. Oh, what are you doing? What are you doing? And it was just, it was just an absolute it was a nightmare in reality. And then when she was free, I, I don't know what it is, but it was just this coffee table that really got in, got in me. Of like, you're, get off the coffee table. Why are you on top of it? Why are we jumping on it right now? And then it was the couch. She was like just jumping back and forth over this thing. I'm just like, what, what are we doing right now? As opposed to just laying down and calming down. So we were button heads until I started really like really pushing more into the exercise that said she's she this specific dog is needing this specific dog is just a little different she's on the level of like what those huskies are like at the end of the day like they they can do a lot they can do a lot whereas johnny man here he he he, he, he can't do too much he, he he really can't do a lot and if you even try to walk this dog for an hour every day he, he will probably like I don't, I don't even know what he would do but with me <clears throat> uh he just he, he literally runs away and he's like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that. He, he'll literally run away from me if I keep doing that with him every day. And it's just how he is. And at the end of the day, most dogs are like him. You can't do too much. But at first, I gave him everything that he needed. I just let him just go wild, just, just get it all out. And then he's just pff, chill. So every single day, this dude's in the house. This is primarily just how he looks in the house. He just sleeps. He find a place. If he, he's gonna end up getting too warm. He's gonna go lay on the floor. He just lays out. He just, he just lays down. He just sleeps in the house. And then that also is where I'm going to say the role model to give to her. We just hang out in here. We don't do anything. But I was button heads because I was thinking of trying to get my dogs to calm down by just like almost like wanting it. Calm down. By saying that words like calm down, calm down, calm down. As opposed to like, what, why are you so excited? What's going on right now that you're so excited? And once I started just to fulfill that thing that was keep getting them to be excited, I have no issues with the dogs in the house anymore. Like, um, like. Almost at this moment today, I put pretty much zero issues with this dog at this time. Because this past couple of days, I've really been just pushing the limits of what, I, what I'm looking for from them. I'm sitting there eating, they leave me alone. I'm sitting there cooking. I can say, hey, get out the kitchen if I don't want you in the kitchen right now. If I'm going to the bathroom, I can say, you know, you just stay here, just stay out of the bathroom, just, just you go fine, do something else. And the default is for this dog is go to the couch. I never even like communicated that to her. And in reality, day one, she wasn't allowed on the couch because she was just. She was doing too much, just too much, all in your face, all jumping, all, just too much, just way too much. So I had to like figure out how to get around that. And for me, what I wanted from my dogs, what I want from this dog, the reason that I was looking for this specific dog, I was trying to find this dog, was for so I can exercise. So that was my goal. And once I realized that I met my goal, I gave, I know how to get the goals that everyone else is looking for as far as the dog that you want. And that's a nice, calm, chill out, hang out dog inside of the house. And from what I just really understand with all my dogs across the board, that you can't just get that with doing nothing. You have to, you have to exercise that animal. You have to get that dog doing something, Some, something. It has, it absolutely has to do it. You, you have no choice but to just skip on that. 
that's the part where it, it's very interesting to me that the, the language of how a lot of what we do with these dogs is you know, pretty much any and every trainer is going to say consistency is what you got to do. And that's um, something that I want to say, like that is pretty much mandatory when it comes down to some dogs. You have to be consistently exercising your dogs, what your dogs are needing to be able to have that dog that you're looking for. You can't just like, I don't feel like doing it. I know that they're going, because I know, I, I base how much exercise I need. Once I just work that dog, I work them. I mean, I run them. I start to see how long it takes for them to like start to get back to this. I'm trying to go wild again. So for me, my first go-to to figure out how long, much this girl needs is as soon as she starts jumping on that coffee table, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but she just starts jumping on stuff again. And I'm like, okay, we got that energy. We got to get out. So now we got to go do something. We got to make something happen. As opposed to just, I'll get to it tomorrow. I'll get to it tomorrow. I'll get to it tomorrow. Then your blinds are chewing up. Your curtains are broken down. Your couch has a hole in it. And you, you just start to see things like that. They start to get mad. And in reality, we don't really get mad at the dog. I don't think. I don't personally don't think. We get mad at ourselves. But we like to like blame something else. But we know it was our fault. You're like, I knew I should have taken that dog out. Just like when the dog goes potty in the house. Like you knew. You knew it. You knew you had to do something. You, you knew that, that I had to that the dog was like looking for that, but you just didn't do it because you're like, I want to do this instead right now. So in the end, you get a little upset about the, with the dog, but you, it's deep down, it's you. You know, you know that you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing. You know that you didn't do anything that you should have been doing. And, and that's really hard for a lot of us, but in most cases, that's what the motivation that we need to like get up and make something happen. And the dogs are quick to just be able to show us that we have to do something and you can't just ignore it because when you ignore it, that's when the craziness starts happening. That's when it just chews up your two or three or four or eight thousand, eighteen thousand. I mean, I worked in a house once and they had like a thirty thousand dollar couch. And I was all this leather, this and this. I'm like, you gonna let your dog chew that up? As opposed to just giving that dog what it needs. The dog doesn't need obedience training. That's not gonna fix your dog from being a nice dog in the house. It's just, it's just not. I just, it's just not. You can't have a dog in a command on a place command all day. You can't have them in a crate, take them out of the crate, put them on place, put them in a down, and do this. And think that in, in, a couple, in time, your dog's going to be nice. Your dog's just build. It's going to keep building and building and building and building. It's the, the, the form of exercise that's going to get that dog to be able to just, just chill, just, just relax, just hang out. And, and then I don't need to worry at all about no sort of obedience of nothing. I don't worry about anything. I don't ever tell my dogs anything what to do. This dog, when I'm cooking, he know he about to get some food. <laughs> he primed. He just go in the kitchen, and he find a spot in the corner, and he just lays down. Because he knows he's going to get something to eat. He knows. He knows I'm trimming something. He knows for a fact he's about to eat something. So he just lays down. He gets out of the way. He just waits. He's like, I'll patiently wait here. I'll wait. Not begging, not demanding, not pushing, not me even teaching him, coaching him, showing him. He just naturally started to understand, if I want something, can I just do something? He just did it on his own. So he's like, if I lay over here out of the way, maybe. And then when he would do it, I'd just say, okay, shoot, have a chicken bone, man. I don't care. Eat what you eat. And she's starting to figure that out as well. And it's the main thing is, it's just, I don't need to like do any extra work other than just exercising my dog to get them to be really, really nice inside of the house. And it's, it's for me, I don't, I don't know, know about you, but to me, that makes life so easy that I don't need to do anything extra. I could just have fun and do something with the dog. And then realize that I'm starting to have a nicer dog all around everywhere I go. A nicer dog in the vehicle when we're riding, just hanging out, taking a nap. A nicer, nicer dog everywhere I go. A nicer dog when I'm eating my food. You know, a good test to, to know what, what you, where you can go next is you're eating your food here. Your dogs are just like hanging out, like whatever. So then you know that you can start taking your dog other places and eating and doing things like that. Especially this, this is a challenging thing for this specific dog. Because she's just, the food in her is just like, it's obsessive. It's it's almost like it's, it's nasty almost in a way how wild she is over some food. And it was a big thing for her to figure out how, how can I get her to calm down around this food? Because it was, it was so hard. But I realized when I would just, I would, I would, I would run her. I would, I would run this dog. I would run her. And I'd get her exhaust. I would get her tired, tired, super tired. Like she's pretty decent today, but she's nowhere near like my, my her tired, tired. And then that's when I was like bringing out the food and doing the things. And she was so tired that she's just like looking at the food and had a whole different revelation to life about the whole concept of what food is all about. Now she's no longer sniffing for food everywhere on the trails. She's, she's just calming down with everything because I just, I just, I worked her. One day I just worked this girl. We, we was moving. 
And I overworked my Kahi because she does better when she's with my shepherd. And I overworked him. I had to give him uh, three days of rest <clears throat> after that. He, he can't keep up with runs like that. But I worked. I ran this. We ran, ran, ran. We ran and ran and ran. We pulled over, took a little break, and started running and started running and pulled over, took a break, started running and started. And she's still recovering from that today. And that was like two, three weeks ago now that I just, we just, we went hard. We went real hard. And she's still not quite like back at what I've ever seen her before. She's still like basically recovering from, holy crap, she got, she got exercise in. And once she got that, the food wasn't so wild anymore. The jumping on the couch wasn't so wild anymore. Jumping all on the coffee table wasn't so wild anymore. Everything just, just completely slowed down. It just started to, to relax because she got relaxed. It had nothing to do with the next tip trick and this and this to get the dogs to be able to calm down. That's just, it, it, it's short-lived, I guess I could say. But the exercise is something that is just my experience. I know we got all kinds of people going to say, oh, my dog's going to gain more stamina, this and this. My experience, the dogs get tired and they're just, they're done. They're done. They are done. Like, I could never even think about working my shepherd, my, my Johnny here, in, in a way that I used to when, when I was trying to get all the energy out of him. Because I used to take him on seven, eight, nine-mile walks. He used to do that. He used, we used to go out, him. My, 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 a couple of my other dog, we used to go out. But today, if I take him past three miles once a week, he's protesting. He's like, dude, I'm tired. You see it in his face. He just walks. He's like, he done. he's done. He can't handle that. So my experience, when I work them hardcore, they end up going down and down and down and down, making life easier and easier and easier. That's what I ended up with this Dalmatian, where now we're in the process that I got to build her up to have more stamina. So for me, you know, I was worried about I don't have enough to be able to walk her and run her. But now I'm like, now that she's capable of moving my chickens around, now she's got extra work to do. So now since she's tired, she's tired. But she can get back into drive because she sees that. She's stimulated like crazy. Like, oh, my goodness. And somehow it's like it's, it's, a, it's a way to, like, push her past. Let her know you're tired, but you still have a little bit more in you. And now we're training to be able to let her work more and more and more. But without that, this dog, she's done. If I take her for an eight-mile walk every day, she's done. She's done. She can't, she can't keep up with that anymore. And I have to now build her and build her. And some days, my goodness, she's already protesting, looking at me like, <laughs> if she's ahead. And she's just getting these eyes back like, how far are we going today? And we're only a half mile in. But at first, man, this girl was just savage, pulling, going wild, going crazy, trying to run while they're pulling, which I appreciate because hopefully I can get her to do that one day again. But I got to build her up to be able to get to that. Day one, she was just, she was going. I couldn't get this girl tired. And I got videos even talking about that, that I'm impressed on how far she can go. And I've never been able to get her tired. But yet today, I can get her, she's exhausted on our walks. All we did was a simple short walk today. And she's, she's done. Because yesterday, we did the same walk. She moved some chickens. The day before, she moved some chickens for hours. Well, actually, yesterday, we was actually chasing them in the main big field. So she got like worked on, worked on, worked. And it just keeps going down and down and down. I have to do less and less and less. I can't, I can't do more anymore. And that's just my experience, what I see. And my experience of how to get what most people are looking for is a calm dog in your house. What my first go-to is I want to exercise. And I learned that I can get a nice, relaxed dog in the home by doing this. That's how I realized the, basically the only way to get that dog to, in reality, just be relaxed. I'm not going to say the only way, but one of the most powerful ways that i've realized doing all the 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 the, the tricks and the the, the, little, the little games and all that it, it it may work for some it may work but still i just i haven't seen it and i still don't see it with other people that i've tried to like coach them to be able to do that to have a dog that literally is like just sleeping just asleep in the house man my dogs just they sleep in the house every time that we are not doing they are passed out they're just done they they, they can't like some of the times you're just like, hey, I can't get, I, I need a break right now. And, and, and I realized the, the, the limitations that these dogs have that it really does not take too much. And again, I'm talking eight miles. That's excessive for most human beings on this planet. But I specifically got this dog so that I could do eight, 15, 25 mile walks and runs. So this isn't a dog that majority of people have in your home. You, you do not have that dog. And, and some of them I say, oh, my dog can, I, 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 I don't know how to, uh, else to do this just to show people how limited these dogs are but just give me your dog because even like even these huskies even these malinois i would love to get one put it on a harness and let's go for a run 
because I watch the videos all the time of the guys that are in the sports that do this, that convince those dogs to pull and, and go all out. They, they're, they're convincing them to do this on behind bikes. And I watch them. These braces are, they're considered sprints. They're like 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes long. In 25 minutes, that dog running all out. And all out, these guys are going, I don't know, 10, maybe 12, 13 miles an hour. They're not like going exceptionally fast. The dogs go wild for minutes, like five minutes. And then it's, it, it starts to slow down. And then it gets to the point that they're no longer pulling, that they're literally running right next to the bike, and now the person is trying to like get past the finish line. These dogs are incapable of just going as far as what I, the, I'm going to say the average human understands. Well, for me, yeah, I do some extreme stuff. I, I, I run hardcore races, and I'm trying to get faster and better. So I can very easily see the limitations. But if you, you, if you think, oh, my dog would be pulling for, for 20 miles, I'm going to straight up say to you, no, it won't. It won't. It won't. I, I'm going to guarantee you that. It's not going to. I would love to be able to handle that dog. And if your dog was able to pull me for my pace that I want to run for 25 miles right now, I'm going to offer you a whole lot. Of, <laughs> I'm going to offer you a lot of money for that dog because I need that dog. But the one thing that I am that I do know is I'm going to do it once and the dog's going to going to do it. I'm going to do it twice and the dog's going to maybe do it. On that third or fourth time, it's not going to do that anymore. Now I got to build it back up to be able to do such a thing. And, and it's just what happens to these dogs. They're not capable of doing anything like extreme. They're really not extreme animals at the end of the day. We have to, we gotta, we gotta do a lot to get them there. And especially for the average, just basic lower drive, hanging out dogs. It doesn't take a lot to get what it is that you're looking for. Because more likely what you're looking for is a nice calm dog in the house. So it's not gonna take, be much of a sacrifice for you to have to just get up and take your dog to do something to get all that energy out so that they can come home and just be able to relax and just hang out. And I'm telling you, this is the, I, I believe that that is the, the main way that dogs bond with us as humans is we, we work them. We get them tired. We give them that exercise. And that dog gets all that out, and it just is able to just hang out, and it's able to sleep. Because a lot of dogs that have, like, anxiety, I've gotten many and many of dogs out of that situation where they're just all anxious because I would work it, and it finally got a single night's worth of rest. That it, it was calming down. Dogs that are like anxious and pacing and nervous in their houses, I've gotten them out of that by working them. By my goodness, just running them, walking them, and just doing little things along the way. Letting them sniff, letting them pull, letting them play, letting them jump, letting them do what they do. And those dogs, they, they stop all that because they no longer have like the, the need because I took it away. Most of what the dogs are doing, they're just, they're, they're, they're screaming to us, I need, I got to do something. So when your dog is chewing up the couch and saying, I got to do something. When your dog is jumping all around and going crazy, I got to do something. Then when we get all that out of them, the dog just, I don't know what it is, but that's, that's where for me, the dog starts, to, I know that they start to appreciate me. They start to realize who I am. They start to recognize that I am someone that they can pay attention to. I am someone that's going to be able to guide them into being able, be able to be in a good place. Not someone that's here to try to hurt you or try to take nothing from you or try to destroy you. And at the end of the day, that's the unfortunate thing that like majority of dog training stuff does today. Takes everything away from the dog. Controls every movement. Controls everything. They can't this. They can't that. They can't sniff. They can't pee. They can't jump. They can't run. They can't this. They can't, 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 can't do nothing. But you could sit. You could down. You could place. You can go in your crate. What is that for a dog at the end of the day? And that's just going to continue to keep giving you a dog that is just, just wild, man. Wild, absolutely wild. These dogs have something in them that they have to do. And they, they have to do it. They absolutely have to. And if we don't let them get that out of them, they're going to go crazy. This is something that I'm going to say with us as human beings. We have stuff that we have to do. We cannot just sit on couch and just hang out here and just do nothing and just watch video after video. We won't last. We won't make it. You can't just sit here, get up, get food, sit here and eat your food, watch TV all day. There's some people that do this and they're on like documentaries and stuff, seeing their lifestyles and see what they're doing. They, they no longer functioning human beings anymore. They, you, we, we deteriorate if we do not get up and do something. We absolutely deteriorate as human beings as well. It's just the way that pretty much everything on this planet works. Everything has a, a sense of exercise that it has to let out. It can't just be stagnant and just think that it's gonna, anything's going to happen. And at the end of the day, there's just a wild stuff that I pay attention to. The more phones and TVs and everything we have, the more depression and anxiety we got. 
that I don't know why, but it's just the more we got stuff to make you sit down and do nothing, the more we got people that are more depressed and more wanting to hurt themselves. But if you strip all that away and you have to get up and go out and do something, more than likely, a lot of that stuff is going to disappear because that's what goes on with the dogs. When we don't give them that exercise, oh, my goodness, they start to get they get wild. I mean, y'all, you know, <laughs> everyone knows is watching this, looking at your dogs. They get wild, man. They get crazy. They get crazy that they don't know what to do. And this is the part where the dog gets out and, and it starts to become a handful. I can't walk my dog because it's just, it's, a, it's, a, it's going everywhere because it's, it doesn't know what to do. And it's for us to come in and guide that animal to show them what to do and show them where to go. But if the dog never gets that, it's, it's going to go, it's going crazy. Some of these dogs get to the point, like what a lot of people say, oh, certain dogs, they got to get a lot of OCD things. They get to spin in. They get to chew in their tails. They get to chew in their feet. It's because they got nothing to do. They got nothing to do. What else can they do? They got to let that energy out. So let me chew on myself. Let me spin circles in the crate. Let me not even crate. Some of these dogs just do it literally in the middle, <clears throat> middle of your living room, just spinning circles. Uh, chasing, oh, chasing light. Some dogs, the light comes through the windows and a dog's chasing it. Chasing uh, uh, the uh, stuff on the TV all the time. Because the dog's not getting what it needs inside. It's got too much amped up energy. But that amped up energy that's just not being used and utilized in any way, it's, it turns into absolute destruction. That destruction is what, unfortunately, most people see in your homes. Because your goal is to get a calm dog. But how to get that dog to be calm. That's the thing that, for whatever reason, majority of people are struggling with. And for me, I've never had, I've never had that problem. I've never, I have the problem of I need a dog that can do 10 times what this dog is capable of doing right now. That's what I need. And you're going to say to me, oh, my Malinois is powerful. I would love, I would love, I, I, I would almost pay you to let me have this dog for a week so that I can see if I want to pay you more to keep this dog because it is going to be too much for you to handle. That if I could put my harness on that dog, strap that dog to me, and take that dog for a 20-mile run right now, now I don't even want to do 20. I want to do a whole full marathon up front. I want to do a whole 26-mile run and running at the pace that I run. And that dog, if it's going to pull the whole way, it better pull the pace that I want to run the whole way without slowing down. Like, I will pay you significant money for a dog like that because that's what I need. I like my Dalmatian. She's going to take years to get there. But I would like to have that now because I'm ready to train right now. I'm ready to get at this today. And, and I would love to just work these dogs just to show anyone and everyone that they have extreme limitations. They cannot keep up with what, we're, what we as humans are demanding, or at least me, you know. Like I said, I, I do different stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm crazy. I'm talking about running 20 miles like three or four days a week. Like I'm crazy. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just wild. I just do extra. And that's not what everyone does. So that's why I know what the limitations of these animals are. Just like yesterday, running the chickens in the field, trying to get them out of the main field, trying to bring them back in, running with my border collie. And this dude is, is, is psycho energy. And he, he, he's done. He's done in 20 minutes max. He's just looking around like, man, I need a, I need a relax, man. I need a, I need a break. And he's going under the trees, trying to get some shade. He, he, he can't, they can't handle all that. They can only do so much. And in most cases, the reason why your dog seems like he can keep going, such as playing fetch, because playing fetch just turns into a zombie-style game that the dog isn't, like, engaged in because the dog's – that's just not the thing for your specific dog. Because some of these border collies, I've seen it. They could go fetch and 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 never get tired because that's not what they're meant to do. That's, it's a, they're not using all of their, I guess, senses, as I can say. They're, 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 gonna, they're very, very limited. And, and, and that's the main thing that the dog, the dog isn't, you're not doing for that dog what that dog needs. And, and that's something that at the end of the day with what we have at our hands and available today, it's so easy to be able to get for our dogs. And it's so easy that today we got stuff that you could just sit down and, and hold something and make the dog run without you having to do anything. Cause I know playing tug, even playing tug, we've got equipment today to make that easy, which I highly suggest you go and pick up and get. If you do play tug with your dog a lot, they're called spring poles. Get the elastic band. It's like my bungee cord. I like the ones that are nice, cost a little bit more. But you're going to be using this for years, so you might as well get the nice one now and, and just sacrifice that cash up front. But it's like, it's like a bungee leash. It's a big, sturdy bungee leash that you hook it up to a tree, you put your tug toy on the end of it, and you get your dog engaged and let them pull. 
let them pull on that tree, not pull on you. You don't have enough force behind you with what these dogs are really capable of doing. Like, you will watch your dog get exhausted in seconds when it's able to go all out, pulling as hard as it can on that tree. And benefits of this, especially dogs that pull, it doesn't take much work for us, especially when you're doing it that way, but the muscle build on your dog it's going to look premium. It's going to look so good. It's going to look so good. It's going to be amazing looking. And it's not going to be much work for you at all to do. But yeah, you holding that toy and trying to do all that, that's hard. It's hard work. I don't care who you, it's, it's hard work. That's hard work. And your dog is way more powerful than you. I don't care who you are. You could be a big, buff, tough, strong, 300-pound guy. That 45-pound pity is going to drag you. <laughs> Let it go all out. It's going to drag you on the ground like you nothing. And that's what's, what's neat about it, to be able to give them the, the full experience rather than some mediocre experience. I want them to have the full experience. I want my dogs to fully engage in a full sprint chase, full experience, not, let, not letting them hold back. A full experience of being able to walk as much as you want to walk and smell as much as you want to smell. A full experience. And that's what really calms them and gives them exactly what we were looking for, a calm dog in the house. Especially, man, I believe... The, the one of the easiest ones, if you have the dog, the one of the easiest dogs to be able to exercise are the tugging ones because you get them those spring poles hooked up to something. And if you don't have a tree, you find you something and dig it in the ground and cement it around so it's stuck in the ground so that dog can pull. Those are the easiest dogs because they're going to do pretty much all the work on their own. And you don't have to put so much effort. And you don't need a lot of space for them to run and go crazy. And then the next one is going to be the one that, that likes to chase. You can get you a car. You can get you a lure course. You get those to get it. But then you need space. You need a little bit of location to take them to. Then a more challenging one is the ones that like to walk and sniff. Because that those are the dogs that, unfortunately, use the human. You can't really, <laughs> unless you get a bike, you can somewhat make it better. And today we got electric bikes. But some things is like pricey for just being a basic electric bike. They like to cost as much as a motorcycle, which don't make no sense to me. Because it's just new. When they're not so new anymore, they're not going to be so much. But then that's the time you get your dog, you get you on a bike, you get you on a scooter, you get you on something, if you can't walk it, to just be able to allow the dog to be able to bounce and smell, smell and go and smell and go, smell and go and smell and go. And you'd be real surprised at how the dog just looks inside of the home once you do all that. The dog's just going to chill out. It's going to chill out. And then that's where, my, my opinion, the appreciation comes from that animal. And that's when things start to look really, really good. Because they say, you know what, you, you gave me the opportunity to be able to just relax, to be able to calm down, to be able to chill. And they're going to want to do everything that you're looking for in the end. Because when I do simple games with this dog in the house, it's, it's sits and downs and things like that. There's nothing added. I don't need to do anything to, to her. She's, she's like, I'll listen to you because we've already got out all that extra craziness. And that's, that's just what the majority of people are looking for from your dog. Not the sport dogs, you know? Get your sport dogs, you don't, you, you, you don't need to listen to me. You do what you do. You need your dogs crazy. You need your dogs hyped up. You need your dogs wild. You need your dogs on edge all the time. So create that dog as much as absolute possible. Interact with the dog as limited as absolute possible. Bring that dog out for its purpose to do its obedience routine and then put that dog back away. Do not allow that dog to get too, too tired because then you're going to drain all of it so that it's, it's, you got to keep it up and keep it up. The stuff is backwards, but yet... Those are majority of those, what I just said right there. That's the trainers that want that dog. But yet majority of those trainers are the trainers that try to convince you of how to have a dog to be able to sleep like this next to you in the house. And it's, that's where we're having a disconnect because most training is that. Most trainers, they always show the, the bite stuff, the, 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 the hardcore obedience looking stuff. But that's not what most people are wanting. Most people want a dog to just sleep in the house, man. <laughs> most of your dogs don't even sleep. They just always on edge the whole time. And that's very damaging for a dog. And that's where, for me, I just would come up with this, different things to saying, but when the dogs would literally bark at nothing outside. Some dogs, I go in the house, and that's how they're acting. They're literally in the window barking. And you're like, dude, there's no, no one around. What's going on? Because the dog is seriously like hallucinating because it's not even sleeping. It's, it's not even with it in this world. It's, it's lost. It's confused. And we got to get these dogs to exercise so they can get out of that. And once they get out of that, dogs, the dogs are cool. They're, they're, they're cool to be around. I have not zero, I got maybe 2% issue with communicating to this dog what I'm looking for inside of the house at this point because of how much we've been walking and running and doing what we're doing. And it's, it's allowed me to be able to just come home and have peace in home and not worried about 
oh this and oh that and oh my goodness and oh my goodness. It's just it's just chill. And I know that that's what most people are looking for. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Johnny. You get up every time I say that. I hear you. Something that is just fascinating about dogs is we want them to do everything that we want. And we stop even worrying or even caring or even thinking about what they want. And I'm just really realizing that when you simply give that dog what it's looking for, it, it gives back what you want without you even having to like explain it to the dog. Teach the dog, I'm going to say. I don't really teach her what I want in this home. I just wanted her to just relax. And once I gave her that opportunity to be able to run and do what she do, she just started to relax. I don't, it just, it literally just happens that way. I don't know why, but it's, nah, it's not easy, I guess I can say. That's why it's not there for most people. Because it takes for us to have to get up and do something. It takes for us to have to get up. We got to make it happen. We got to put in the action. We got to do something, anything, something. And then the dog will start to calm down and relax. But we can't just like sit in the house and the dog is going wild and just say, calm down, stop, 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 calm down, sit down, get there, get off of that, get over here, get off of that. You're not doing anything. The dog should already just, it, this, this is what I see with majority of dogs that I work with and, ex, and I know for a fact with my own dogs that when I give them that exercise, I am not explaining nothing. Like right now, if I didn't want her on the couch, I'll just say, get down, get off. And she's just, oh, okay. All right. But for me, that'd just be unfair because of how comfortable she looked right now. She looks so comfy, so I'm just not going to mess with her. <laughs> I'm not going to mess with her. But it's just something that when we get up and we do and we make it happen, the dog is just going to naturally start doing what it is that you want. And it, it has nothing to do with teaching them. It's just giving the dog what it wants, and it just starts to do what you're looking for. 